Hey, my name is Daniel Gravers, and today oh, let's, I want to share mine. Hi, so my name is Daniel Gravers, and I'm an SAP mentor, and I've been working with SAP integration for, I guess, 12 years, something like that. So uh, I just wanted to, to create this video because I was out at a client today, and we had a talk about, so what kind of SAP integration tools would you recommend for this task? And it's like, well, we got this tool, we got this tool, we got this tool. So I sort of thought, this is something that people are asking me all the time. So I wanted to create a video where I can go through some of these different things, what they are about and what the tool is about. So let's try this one. So the the first tool that comes to mind is process orchestration, process uh, integration. Uh, these tools date back from the XI30 back in 2003 it's built by sap using app up and java uh, so it is a proprietary framework that that can do these kind of things uh, it's using uh, the enterprise service bus uh, framework or concept where you put a message in so it's a message based system you put a message in and this message is then delivered to one or more systems in either an order or in uh, some sequence uh, but but you don't have the ability to to send a message get a response back put it into a new message so handling all of this framework about adding and uh, changing messages um, so uh, the components built uh, using some java architecture for for building components that was uh, relevant back in those days uh, it is based on on-premise uh, you want to run it you have to maintain it yourself uh, and it's a server just like your SAP server um, it runs a series of different services so uh, you got the ability to run uh, sub cloud platform integration tools you can run some gateway stuff uh, some and I guess that the, the big difference between PI and PO is uh, PO is using PI for all the messages, but then it adds uh, process orchestration. So you can do BPMN models on top of it. You can do uh, processes in different forms. And then you have the capability to, to handle, uh, yeah, uh, BRMs. And I think there's also some portal into it. So that was a little about that platform see if we can select the next one then the next one is the SAP cloud platform for integration and this is built on Apache Camel um, so compared to a normal PI message this is a, a much more flexible uh, message flow so you can actually create a message flow that that follows a lot of these requirements in uh, cloud scenarios where you want to send a message, get a response back, send a new message, get a response back, and handle all of these uh, frameworks. So it uh, only runs in SAP Cloud, uh, and SAP Cloud platform you can run on Azure, Amazon, and Google, and probably there will be some more on, on the way, uh, I would imagine. The cool thing about HCI compared to the other one is uh, they have a lot of predefined content, at least if you want to integrate with SAP tools, you can just find how do I integrate with a Reba uh, from e ERP and you can see all the different interfaces scenarios and you can just say, I want this, this and this, put in the configuration and you're supposed to be done. There's obviously some modification to some of these interfaces you have to do for them to work, but at least you don't have to, to sit and consider which interfaces should we use? Why is this good compared to this one? Um, then you get a lot of adapters out of the box or components as they're called in Apache. You can just compile, recompile them and uh, deploy them and run them. Uh, so this is SAP's, uh, I think the, the place they're putting most focus on creating a cool platform that can do, do the things that, that people are doing for integration. And this is also a message-based uh, platform. Um, and they're also adding the capability to run rules and there's some workflow capabilities also. It's, so w 
workflow in, in PI, you have two types of workflow. You have the one that you're using just for um, technical processing, like this, wait a minute, send this message in, get the response back and send it out again. Uh, and then you have the user-oriented workflow where you have some users that have to see an action, do something about it and handle it in that way. So uh, that was the, the two different things. Uh, but the big things that I often get asked is, so will SCP subcloud platform integration or HCI replace process orchestration? I would, I would say on the, the beginning, well, it's a big question because we don't know. Uh, SAP still position the process orchestration as uh, the tool to do most integration with or a lot of integration on. And I was at a customer meeting today where we had discuss discussion about which one to we, do we select and what what's better and or worse. Um, and well, it was all on-premise, so HCI did not make sense in that uh, per, per thing. But yeah, it's more agile for a lot of these cloud integration. You can do these kind of lookups that you have to do as as workaround in the PI system. Um, so some of the, yeah, you can take some of this data and run it locally on your process orchestration system. Um, but as I understand, it's only pre-delivered SAP content that you can, that would probably also change uh, so you can run all HCI content. Uh, no timeline, I, I believe. Um, what else? Uh, well, obviously people think, well, can we get rid of our process integration system because we can use this? At the moment, I don't think so uh, because it's uh, two different data models. Obviously, there's something that's that's uh, the same, but I think uh, the amount of work we see with a PI to or a dual stack to single stack migration, the effort would be a lot more if this, it's going to be from uh, it's PI to an HCI. Obviously, you can reuse the mapping but dynamic properties and stuff like that, they are done a little differently and it could be a little challenging. Um, so yeah, it's a good platform to do the, the flows uh, and improve developer speed. So I definitely think if I, really nice used on using five different abbreviations for the same tool in, in one presentation. But the uh, SCP Cloud Platform Integration is probably the, the best, fastest tool if you want to do some of these integrations. Um, another tool, uh, and we also talked about this with, with the client, was uh, Gateway because well, I think they had some kind of a portal where customer suppliers was logging in and getting some data. And obviously it could be relevant to, to expose them using a gateway where you can create all data rest services that people can use. And you probably have it already in your landscape because you're already using uh, or will have to be using Fiori Launchpad quite, quite soon. Uh, it runs on ABAP and on the PO system also. Uh, um, the other is uh, API management. And this tool obviously ties a good way in together with the... So this is also a tool that, that correspond a lot with the online access to, to different resources. Uh, so API management is the the capability to filter, uh, secure uh, all the APIs that you're exposing. Um, so if you have SAP Cloud Platform, you can, or oh, if you have some some APIs in, in Gateway, you can expose them using API management. And with that, you can give developers access to use specific APIs in specific ways. Uh, you can add caching, so the performance will be better. There's uh, different kind of restrictions. You can say you're only allowed to use 
five requests an hour or something like that. Um, it supports REST all data and SOAP, I think. Uh, there's both a cloud version and an on-prem version, but as I understand, SAP is most interested in the the cloud version because that's being updated uh, most often. And then I guess the elephant in the room is uh, how this is working and this is working using uh, APGs, uh, which now is acquired by Google uh, API solution. So they have taken that product, white labeled it and created a new uh, UI on top of it um, to make it easier for, for people to use. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, post them below here. Uh, I can see that we've got a, quite a lot of viewers on. So uh, if you have questions, I will go through those uh, comments uh, along the way, uh, or at least afterwards. Um, then we got the application interface framework, which is good for uh, app, -app integration. Uh, so this is an application that runs on, on your app, -app system. And it enables you to um yeah uh, whenever you're receiving a message you can put it in between uh, the posting and uh, the message and with that you're able to either enrich idocs or put in more data that that you would need um for for them to to work um and then uh, yeah you have any rules, conversion values, it's a good thing to do there. And it also have validation and, and error handling. So if, if someone puts in a, a wrong uh, purchase order number or whatever it could be like, you would be able to, to change it if you set up some specific rule that says, hey, purchase orders is, is uh, okay, you would be able to change them and, and fix it. So I think I'm actually on the last one now, which is, uh, it's quite a long video that we created so far. So uh, the the last thing that I obviously don't know that much about is the ETL tools. And you can get a guide from uh, SAP has created and CRIO guide that give you ability to, well, what is SAP or hold strategy on this? Um, and I should probably do a more uh, detailed session about that one uh, sometime. Um, but basically for, for these uh, replication ETL tools, there's these six tools that can do some of the same thing. And you would have to figure out uh, which use cases you wanna use one in compared to all the other ones. Um, so it, it's obviously a little challenging uh, so I think we're up on 12 integration tools or something like that. The six I presented plus these. And you as an architect developer need to figure out which of these do we want to buy and invest in, in learning. Um, so with integration and, and tooling, it is uh, challenging and you have to figure out which of them, well, would suit these uh, these use cases that you have. So uh, yeah, if you have any po comment, post post them in in the chat uh, or uh, uh, yeah in the comments. I'm looking forward to to see those. Uh, but I uh, hope you have enjoyed this video so far. Be sure to to subscribe and like the page uh, so you can see all the other videos that I'll be creating. Um, bye.